Hello everyone and welcome to another communion. We're going to read again from Judges 15 and we're going to start from verse 11 which is what we read yesterday and we're going to go all the way down to 15. So, then 3,000 men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Etam and said to Samson, do you not know that the Philistines rule over us? What is this you have done to us? And he said to them, as they did to me, so I have done to them. But they said to him, we have come down to arrest you, that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. Then Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. So they spoke to him, saying, No, but we will tie you securely and deliver you into their hand, but we will surely not kill you. And they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him, then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire, and his bonds broke loose from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it, and he killed a thousand men with it. Wonderful. Yesterday I mentioned that verse about where, they, where his people said, don't you realize the Philistines are Lord over us? And I was encouraging you to believe God for the best in your life. God has made you the head, not the tail. Today, there's a phrase that's used four times, and this is just to encourage you. God can change things in an amazing way. Wherever you are at the moment, you might be in the midst of difficulty. Your life might not be just right. All your ducks might not be in a row. I don't know. Use whatever expression you like, but it might not be the way you would choose it at the moment. And when we read through the story of Samson, Samson was a, was a, a flawed man. His eyes got him into trouble. He fancied women all the time. He got himself into real difficulty regularly. But there's one phrase that comes four times, and Kathy uh, Jemima read it on uh, one of the occasions. Let me just give them to you. The first one is in the, the previous, it's in chapter 13, verse 25. It says, and the spirit of the Lord began to move upon him. And then we have it in Judges chapter 14, verse 6. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Chapter 4, verse 19. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. Then verse 14 that Jemima read from chapter 15. Yeah. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, burned up the ropes that were on him, and he defeated the enemy. The spirit of the Lord came. And then, of course, one last time that we'll probably look at tomorrow at the end of the story when the spirit came on him one more time. That's the wonderful thing that we can have is that you and I, we may not be perfect. We may not even be anywhere getting near what we think we ought to be but we are candidates for the spirit of the god of god to move upon us it's just availability even though samson made some tremendous mistakes and let his eyes get himself into all sorts of trouble yet when he needed god God came upon him in power. And I want to encourage you today. You might be on your own in your home and God can come upon you in power. You might be, I don't know, all sorts of difficulties facing you. You might have lost your job. You might be thinking, how am I going to pay for this? Listen, let me tell you this. In a moment, these were moment times. When this, It doesn't say gradually, though that can happen as well. But on those four occasions, and then once more at the end, it says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And it was a, an instantaneous thing that changed everything. He defeated the enemy in a moment when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. So I want to encourage you, believe God today. Your circumstances, if they're not the way you want them, can change in a moment when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you. And that's what we're praying for today. Uh, Matthew 26, verse 26 to 30. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And this is a wonderful thing. You know, when Jesus Jesus actually said, it's better for you that I go, 
And that was the last time that he ate and drank with them. He says, it's better for you that I go, because if I go, I will send the comforter to you, the one who can come upon us. So as we eat together, you may need to pause the video if you do get your bread and, and cup ready. We're going to take this and eat this with you, remembering Jesus who promised the Holy Spirit. Let's eat together. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to you in this bread and, and wine. And we, as we come into your presence, we thank you that you cleanse us, you forgive us, you bless us, you give us everything that we need, and we appreciate that. We take the cup today and we give thanks all that Jesus has done for us. And we set this before him. That's what we're doing day after day. Lord, we're saying we set you before us. We need you. We need you in our lives. And so we drink this together, acknowledging our need of you and your provision for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. I want to pray for you today. Yesterday we prayed for Dory. Let's pray for her again today. And, and people that were praying for you, Dennis in, in France, some individuals that have been sent to us. We thank God for the answers to prayer, but we continue praying for people that God will do something incredible. We pray for you and your home. We pray against this COVID thing. Pray for the companies that are developing the vaccines, that it will be safe, that we'll be protected. Whatever happens in the future, God will give us wisdom. We know there's so much flying around the internet that causes so much fear to people. So we ask God to give us wisdom. And by the way, just on that note, people who sent me videos, I've tended to reply in the same way. In Colossians, it talks about the peace of God being our umpire. The J.B. Phillips one translates, I think it's at 316, so let the peace of God rule your heart. Mm -hmm. And the, the Phillips translation says, let it be your umpire. That means it, it makes decisions. We will know what to do. God will give us peace throughout all of this. We can be in peace. No fear, because perfect love drives out fear. Father, I pray for each one of our friends in different parts of the world today. Thank you that, that perfect love it drives out fear. Oh, Lord, I pray people will live fear-free lives today. For our friends, we lift Dory to you. Pray your blessing on her. I lift Dennis to you. Pray your blessing on him. And pray, God, your healing power will be on both of them in their family and their families in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you that we are candidates for the Spirit of God to come upon us. And I pray today for each one of our extended family here across the world, as we go about and do what we're doing today, Lord, would you, would you send your Spirit to come upon us, to give us the power that we need to live for you, power to defeat, recognize and defeat the enemy, and power to live a victory Christian life today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So we'll be back with you again tomorrow. This is Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday and then we're heading towards the weekend. So God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus name.